Welcome to another mini tutorial from 2dgameartguru.com. Today I'm working in Affinity Designer to create spider webs using symbols. The idea is to break it down into segments and then duplicate those segments as symbols. I start with a straight line, adjust the origin of that line to the top, duplicate and rotate the line to get my segment and then I create a line that connects the two, curve it with the node tool and make sure it does not scale with the object. I duplicate that cross segment, scale it and place it along the base line which is my straight vertical line and make sure it attaches to the diagonal. I use the node tool to adjust the lines and then select all but the diagonal line and turn them into a symbol. Bring up the symbol panel and create a symbol from the lines. Make sure you group them first otherwise each line will turn into an individual symbol. I group first, select the origin, put it to the top and then make a group out of that symbol so we have half of a fern leaf. I use the transparency tool to add some transparency towards the bottom that way the web will fade towards the outside and there is no need to connect each line to an object in the scene. I select all the lines in the symbol and make sure the scaling with object is off. When I duplicate the symbol scale and skew it the lines stay consistent. I select the symbol, duplicate it and rotate it. It should rotate from the top. I place it so it matches the edge of the previous symbol and then start skewing and scaling it. Duplicate again and repeat. I adjust the last segment with the top beam and finish it off with a horizontal line drawn with a pen tool. I add the transparency to that so it fades and matches the other lines. The big advantage is this process can be matched to any angle. Aligning to the diagonal beam, I duplicate the symbol, mirror it horizontally and repeat the same process, rotating, skewing and scaling the width until I reach the top beam. Seeing the design is based on a few simple lines in the symbol, it's easy to adjust. I select all the curves in my symbol, adjust the stroke or set it to a dashed stroke. By changing the setting in one symbol, all the symbols on the screen will be adjusted automatically. I just need to fix the two lines I added for the very top. By grouping the symbols I can apply opacity or transparency with a transparent gradient to the group not to each symbol which makes it a lot more versatile. Here is the first scene, some basic spider webs. Let me do a second one, this time a full 360 degree rotation on a different background with more detail. I've set up the symbol with more lines. To make the next symbol match, I just duplicate it, rotate it, and then go in with the node tool and adjust the individual nodes to match up with the beginning of that line on the left side. I then repeat the process of duplicating, rotating, scaling the widths and skewing in one direction. As long as I'm just changing those two parameters, the next symbol will match and I can continue until I reach the full circle. Just be aware that the power duplicate takes the last action and duplicates it. So if you scale, it will scale the next element even more. The tricky part is the last segment. It needs to match with the first one. So it's a bit fiddly to get the scaling and skewing right for that one.
I group all my symbols in order to scale and rotate them to match the scene. And here is the full spider web matching the background quite well. So far I just used the basic stroke. You can change that to a vector brush. I created a simple textured intensity brush. Just align with a few circles on top to create the idea of droplets on the spider web. I exported that to PNG and turned it into a texture intensity brush set to repeat by selecting the lines in one symbol and assigning the new texture brush to it. I can change the whole look quite quickly. Assigning the brush turns it into something like that. I can then go in and adjust the size a little bit, make the droplets a little bit smaller. I hope you can still see it on YouTube and the quality is good enough. It doesn't look like a perfect line anymore and there is an idea of droplets at least on the big screen while I'm working with it. I group the whole design and apply a transparent gradient to it. The nice thing about that is I can adjust the different spots in the gradient to make it less or more transparent, emulating light shining on my spider web. I alternate between more transparent and less transparent spots. And at this stage I will call the second design done. I hope you got an idea on how to use symbols to make spider webs. They are really versatile and can be quickly adjusted. If you like this tutorial, please subscribe to my channel, click on the notification icon. Let me know in the comments below what you'd like to see on my channel or on my blog and I will see you again soon.